Uh, hello, this is David Birch at Star Pass School of Navigation in Seattle with a video illustration for an article we just po posted on uh, how to do, <coughs> excuse me, the solar index correction, uh, how to use the sun to measure the index correction of a sextant. And this is a very accurate method to do, but I must note and caution that it's a dangerous method. Uh, and so it is a one case celestial navigation can be dangerous. So we have to be very careful with the sun shades so we don't look at the, and get any kind of even indirect peep of the sun because we're looking, we're looking straight at the sun through the telescope uh, for, the, for this method. So we have to build special shades. And in this article, there is discussion on the shades, uh, on how to make the shades. That's here in the back of this article. And I'm going to, some of these things we're going to see in the art, in the uh, demonstration. And there's a section, um, here's one of the shades that we made, for example. Uh, we, this is one we actually used in this test, but uh, we painted, ended up painting it black because it was leaking in a little bit of light in here. Although we've used this type of shade for years, what happened was we tried to hook a camera, actually a cell phone, with a special attachment to the end of one of these uh, devices, and the end of the telescope. And uh, we were going to then uh, film this and show what it looks like. Now, it turns out we have a very nice way to show you exactly what you're going to see anyway. But that did not work out. But one of the things we did learn in that process is that our old-fashioned way of making these filters, which we've published several places, is really not uh, very good for that kind of cell phone of, of viewing a or trying to record a video through this telescope. A little bit of light leaks in here sideways. It doesn't, it doesn't affect during the sun or doesn't hurt your eyes or anything, but it affects the, the quality of the image. So we ended up having to paint all these things black that we made, but I'll show you that. This, uh, this section here, this older section, one of our older sections, and it has this kind of like a, uh, uh, it's a welder shade. If you look at this, it's just a little teeny eyepiece cap that goes right over the top of this end here, this end, and then it has this really th totally thick dark glass. You can't see anything through it at all but the sun. And then, but we, 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 but this is not very common. You don't see that very many sextants, a new sextants anyway. And so we make these uh, kind of sun filters here and have an article and one of our books explains where to buy this. We got it linked in this article here too, where you can buy this foil, the special sun filter foil, and then how you make these. Uh, and so then the other thing we need to do is we need to build this kind of sort of umbrella. You could call it umbrella. Uh, that's what uh, Masculin called it uh, back in the day, 1766. He said you got to use one of these two. That's called, he called umbrella. But I'll show you that in a minute. Our, our picture here, let's see, umbrella. Here's one. We found that you can just cut these, put them, and then staple it here. It works pretty well. And here's that filter that we use it's a black it's the same one as in the picture this is the this is the foil no paint on this it just looks looks black here but it's not it's bright silver and but we just painted all these seams black here so that no light gets through so that's what we were doing there and then taking the actual sights you then got this section set zero degrees zero minutes here and you're looking right straight up at the sun so that's why it's extremely careful you don't want any light any accident there's and I might say this now the reason this little shade this umbrella is important is um, in other words you might think that you could get away with putting in the sun shades up here the index shades and then put in the horizon shades and then you'd be okay but that does not work for this method it does not work first of all the horizon shades are never dark enough for this uh, to because this this kind of protection and uh, these of course would be probably but there's never I've never seen any section if, if it's fifty dollars or if it's five thousand dollars I've never seen a section where you can't, by looking through this telescope, kind of wiggle around and look underneath the one of the mirrors or shades. So these, I would have to say that it is not possible to do this technique using standard shades on a telescope, on a section. You've got to either cover this one up completely or cover this one up completely. And then in addition to that, build one of these umbrellas so you can't peek around the edge. 
and uh, the, so that's a, that's a starting point. Now, let's just go and look at this. Um, now, this is actually a graphic, but it turns out this is really what it's going to look like. And all, we just spent like a couple days trying to get that video to work and finally just realized, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Because this is literally what it looks like. The, 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 sun, the two suns will have the same color, maybe, maybe a very slight a very slight maybe a little bit of color in one of them but something but so this is now what it looks like looking through uh, one of the higher power scopes looking at the sun um, with all these filters in place and um, this is with the section set to zero degrees zero minutes so let's just randomly say zero degrees zero minutes now you have two views of the sun here uh, this one here, um, let me see, you see this guy here, let's put him up here. Now I'm turning the knob uh, clockwise in this case like this. But this sun here, that's a direct view of the sun. That's a direct view of the sun. Uh, remember, we have it at zero degrees, zero minutes. And um, so we're basically seeing the whole sun. And then over here is the reflected view, and that's what, turn, that's what moves as you turn the dial. Now this guy sits stable like a rock like this, assuming your arm is strong and you're holding it steady and you're looking right at the, right at the uh, sun. Now, if you move around a little bit, the both of these will move around here. And if you if you turn the knob too much after you find it, you'll lose it. And it's not that easy to find the sun. You have to because you're looking through a higher power scope here, and you're looking uh, up in the sky. But it, with some practice, you do it. And you don't want to be peeking around your umbrella shade there because your eyes are going to get fatigued at this process, no matter how you do it. So. Um, because you're in the bright sun uh, and so forth. Now you could do it later in the afternoon or when the, earlier in the morning or later in the afternoon, but that, that point's addressed in the article. Uh, so here we are, and that's when you're turning the dial, that's the one that's going up and down, and they'll be just about the same colors. So let's say you, when you first get the section, you're going to check the index correction. So the normal way is you set a dial 0 degrees, 0 minutes. And in this case, instead of looking at the sea horizon, you look up at the sun, and you see this. And this is what you see. Now, what does that mean? This distance between here and here, up and down, that's the index correction. That's the index correction. That's what we're trying to measure. This left right here, that's a side error. Now, with, you, with this method, unlike with the sea horizon and so forth, some other methods, even if, even if you're using a star, if you're using just a star, you, a little bit of side errors can, can maybe be helpful. But in this method, I think pretty much the side, any kind of side error is really going to distract from our strongest application here. So the first step here is get rid of the side error. So you have to go and adjust your, adjust your mirrors till you get rid of the side error, and you end up with something like that. Then when you turn the dial, you see this guy. Here I'm turning it, I'm turning it what would be called toward toward me so it's going to smaller numbers when you turn to bigger numbers the sun goes down the reflected sun goes down in the dial you can think of it the phrase i'm bringing the sun down to the horizon well when you increase in numbers the reflected sun moves down this view here like this okay so one thing you could do is you could just bring this down let, and if we just set it there and it looked like this when we had zero, we had the section setting at zero, let's say, oh, maybe something like this. I uh, can't get it exactly right. But say something more like uh, this. Oops, something like that. Something like that. So that would be, that would actually be a reading. Uh, that would be zero. You got it zero degrees, zero minutes, and it looks like that. That's got an index error on the scale, on the scale. And then when you turn the numbers to bigger numbers, this will come. To, uh, excuse me. When you bring it to bigger numbers, that'll come down. And when it overlaps exactly like that, then you could read the dial and you get the index correction. And let's say it's one point six. That's the example that we have throughout the article and so forth. So it's one point six or one point seven, one point eight, one point four some number 
and that is the index correction. So you did that is in a sense a solar index correction. You just overlap those guys and read it. However, that's not a very accurate way to do it, and because the real world is not quite as sharp as this, and and um, and uh, you can't tell. You know, you can't tell exactly. Let me just tweak it just a hair. You know, I I, I can't. Let's see. Well, I'm not going to play with it. But with the real dial, you can actually see. I've got some jerking, some quantization in my mouse movements here. But uh, you have a little. You could be just underneath there, and you can't tell. In other words, you could be sitting like this, and you could turn that dial a few tenths before you see anything move. So that's not very good. So um, the better way, and what what is actually the unique way about this method is we don't just rely on this overlap. I mean, we would certainly overlap them and write down and say approximate index correction 1.6. Okay, done. But now we want to do the full method, and I in doing this method, I want to always be moving in the same direction and we're basically going to measure the width of this Sun twice the semi diameter we're going to measure it twice once using the upper limb of the direct view and once the lower limb of the direct view so the first thing we do would call in the let's say the toward direction if I let me just see my forms again here toward direction yeah toward direction okay so the toward direction things are going up so the first thing I've got to do is go clear down here below the below the dial right like that okay so that's my starting point like that this one down here then I turn the dial now I'm turning the dial to smaller numbers to smaller numbers but when I get up to here I was way up on the dial remember I brought it clear down so I'm way up on the dial so this is going to be on the scale and this is the number I want to read when I have those just two just touching like that I want to read that dial and that's going to be on the scale let's see here well on the scale on off the scale that's going to look something like this one so that's going to read 34 minutes you see, for example, 34, 33, 32, 36. I mean, some number like that. Uh, it's basically uh, two times the semi diameter plus the index correction is what that is, that number. Uh, so that is that number. And I write, I write that 30, 34, I write that down. Okay. And I'm going to put that in the form. Where is our form? I just put that here. That was 34.0 and that's on. And I'm moving in the toward direction. That means the, the, the sun's going up the dial, up, this, up the dial. So now I go back and I keep going up. I keep going up like this. And then I want to go all the way up, all the way up, and past here, past here, and then stop. Whoop, right, that's pretty good, right there. I want to stop right there. Now I've been going, as I've been going up, I'm moving that dial backwards. So this is now going to be off the scale. So when I read that sextant uh, here, it's going to read something like this. So you read this. When I read this, it's 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 29.2, 29.2. And remember, these are going backwards off of the, backwards off the scale here. Uh, so it's really uh, 60 minus 29.2. It's 30.8 minutes off the scale. So this is, in other words, this one is uh, 30 point, 34.0 minutes on the scale in the direction of the numbers going. This one is 30.8 minutes behind the scale, although it reads 29.2 because we got to subtract from 60. So that's the process right there. And then that goes in the form. That's at 29.2. 29.2 goes in the form. Then I subtract these two and I get this is a 30.8. So what I've done is I've measured the I've measured two times the semi-diameter of the sun twice. I measured it once with the top edge and once with the bottom edge. In one case I got 34, in one case I got 30.8. And in the article it shows why how this math comes about this way. So what I do then is just take these two and subtract them and divide by two. That's my index correction. 1.6 minutes on. And then I can also take these two and add them and divide by four, and that's a semi-diameter. And that I should look up, you see here on this date when this was done, 
this was some data done quite a while ago, actually, 19, well, 1901, maybe 1901, uh, uh, 2001, it looks like. Um, and the semi-diameter was 16.2 at the time, and, and that checked out, it was 16.2. The few checks we did today and yesterday and so forth, we didn't actually get this right on. We were off by a tenth or two on the semi-diameter. On the very, we tried it three or four different sections, different shields, different everything, and we didn't we didn't get quite as good as this. But we were like within a couple tenths. So that's the process. And uh, and and the thing that I want to illustrate is this picture is what it looks like. And the thing that you have to get used to is when you're when you're doing this kind of measurement is if let's say this is what I'm this is what I was calling the direction. These are numbers getting smaller. That we're getting smaller, so that's what I would call uh, I would call that the uh, tw uh, toward direction in the article. I call that the toward direction. This is going up. The numbers are getting smaller. This when you're doing going down this way. This is the away direction. The numbers on the dial are getting bigger. You're turning counterclockwise. Now, when then you do see what we did here was we we started here we went here we're all going in the in the toward direction we read that we went up here and measured that like that that's all in the toward direction but if I was did this one and then got a good number and then I came up here like this and up like this and then I went here like this and then ah bummer I missed it so you don't want to just come down and stop you got to come clear down here and go back up. And be sure that you're always doing your last motion in the same direction. And that's the toward measurement. Then the, then the away measurement is you start with a thing up here. Crank this one up all the way up. Then you can now go away and you meet this one. Then you re re write that down and then come down and read this one and write that one down. And then you can solve in the form again. So that's the process, and this is literally what it looks like inside uh, in, with, the, with those filters. Uh, so we don't need to try it. We give up on making the video. This works. So that's that, and I'll post this as an as, as a annotation to that article.